Right, good morning and uh, thank you for joining The Average Golfer. I'm down here at Four Golf Chester and we're going to do a head to head that is perhaps beyond me in terms of capabilities because we're going to be looking at two irons that are very much aimed at the player's market. It's the Ping Blueprint iron, very small compact iron to say the least. And then we've got from Taylor Made, we've got the P7 TWs. TW obviously referring to Tiger Woods himself. He's helped in the design of these. They're both very small, they're both very compact. They're two of the smallest iron heads I've seen for absolute years. Question is, can the average golfer handle them? And then at the end of it all, who do I think comes out on the top in this head to head? Right now, with those of you who watch the channel frequently, you'll know I've just posted in the last few days my review of the Blueprint irons. And uh, I have to say, I was overall impressed with the performance of them, and although they were very small and compact, I was able to do reasonably okay with them. But it begged the question, and I mentioned it in that video, I've not reviewed the P7TWs from TaylorMade. That's this from uh, this blade uh, that's been designed by and for the requirements of Tiger Woods himself, and I've hit both of these clubs and I think it's a very interesting comparison. Yes, they are very much the player's iron, but I just want to have a look at how they compare in a head-to-head -head with the swing I've got today. They are both very, very small, as you can see from the images I've put up in front of you now. Not a great deal of difference in terms of size and overall profile. There's a slight difference in the actual shape of them and there's very much a high toe end on the uh, ping prototype and that'll be something that suits uh, your eye. The interesting thing for me, one interesting thing, is the amount of grooves that are in the club. There's 16 grooves on a P7TW and only 13 on that of the, um, the blueprint iron and that's something again a specific requirement asked for by Tiger Woods himself. There's a milled grooved bottom in terms of the P, uh, the Tiger Woods iron I'm going to refer to it as, um, which again is all to do with interaction with uh, turf interaction. Uh, there's a high chrome finish on one, a satin chrome finish on the other, as you can see from the images. I think these are again very much personal choice. The top line is incredibly thin, the sole is incredibly thin. For me, on a looks basis, then the Tiger Woods iron wins for me but that's very much, like I said, a personal thing. This is a player's iron, there is no question about it. It's somebody who's got a very consistent strike pattern. It's somebody who's maybe looking to shape the ball as well. There's minimal offset on both these clubs. They're very much almost identical in their makeups. But what I want to find out is when the average golfer hits them, what kind of numbers can I get out of these? What kind of performance can I get on, out on these? And what are the differences from my perspective and let's find out who I think comes out on top in terms of the battle of these absolute quality irons. Right, let's start things off with an apology. And the first one being it's absolutely pouring down out there and I can't get the camera outside, which gives you the angle to see the sort of uh, the strike, the connection I make. So apologies for that. And a very quick one as well, and I did mention it on the Blueprint video. I need some feedback. I'm using GC2 to record data. And one of the issues that I've had in the last 12 months, I went from that, uh, from Skytrack to GC2 for more confidence in the data, but I've lost the visuals in terms of you no longer get to see sort of where I hit out into the uh, into the bay, which is what Skytrack provided. And uh, I'd like to know how much have I lost in terms of um, watchability, I can't think of a better word, but uh, in terms of what you get to see, should we be bringing back Skytrack? Uh, and that's an interesting one for me and one I'm gonna have to seriously look at. Anyway, you're gonna have to just take my feedback for the time being. We're going to start off with a ping blueprint. Now, I did the um, um, numbers the other day, um, so why am I recording them again? Well, for me, as an average golfer, my swing will vary from day to day. So I think if we're going to do a head-to-head, -head, we'll take today's swing, and then we'll see what numbers we end up with today. But I'm expecting 34 loft on this. Uh, so again, very much them traditional lofts. I'm expecting that sort of 150-ish carry, 155 carry, if I'm striking it well. The thing to mention, very briefly, like I said, and have a look at these images, this very much this high toe end. I'm not sure whether I like it or not. It's kind of, it's very compact as an iron, but that kind of, um, it is very noticeably very different, that high toe end. Uh, but it's sort of, it's very, it's very much a sharp, there's no rounded edge to it, it's very much a sharp um, top line. And I don't know, I'm not sure about that. It's very compact, like I say, you see no club whatsoever. Um, behind the ball and it's going to appeal to very few players I would think but 
And I said the other day when I hit them, and that's a really good start, that I was quite surprised. I mean, these are blade-like clubs. There's no getting away from it. Uh, there's no other name for these. These are blades. And there is no meat on them whatsoever. This sole that I refer to is absolutely wafer thin. And frightens you to death, to be quite honest with you, when you first take a look at them. And I think that's a big deal, because I think for a lot of people who look at these on the shelf, I don't think they're going to go near them. I really think you would be scared off completely. Um, but if it's that type of iron, more compact iron that you like the look of, then I'd consider them because they are, let's say, easier to hit, more forgiving, whatever you want to use, than what they look they might be, appearance wise. I'm referring to. Let's try one more. Hit both decent balls there. The one thing I'd say that I did have an issue with the, um, the blueprint time was the feel. Uh, forged clubs and ping. I've still not seen anything from them that really produces a really soft feel. Last ball. Oh, that's three decent balls there, really good. Swinging quite good this morning, quite, quite like the idea of this head to head with this club this morning. It wouldn't be one for an off day. Um, I'm going to get some numbers on that in terms of days. It's only 7 iron versus 7 iron today. Uh, we'll be using the Seed SD02 ball. And we'll see what data we collect on this one. And then I'm going to switch over and start getting exactly the same. I'll give you my opinion on this iron from Taylor May in conjunction with Tiger Woods. Okay, let's start off in terms of head-to-head -head visuals. I'm going to throw two pictures up for you now. Uh, let's have some feedback. What do you think? If you were picking one of those off the shelf, which would it be? For me, the tailor-made iron wins by an absolute mile, to be honest with you. I'm a sucker for a bit of a high chrome finish, so maybe straight away, but I love the milled uh, grooves on the bottom, on the sole of these as well. Again, seeing that in the milled, uh, milled grind uh, wedges as well, which I'm a big fan of. And again, just the, I think the contrast between the chrome and the, the matte finish on the face, again, I always like the way that frames the ball at address. And again, that top line is something that, um, it's thin. It seems thinner on the, pro on the blueprints, um, but yeah, for me, this is a much more classic looking iron and fits every remit of an old style blade. But once again, and I am hitting the ball quite good today, once again, surprisingly, uh, easy is the wrong word, isn't it? It's just that when I, I first seen these clubs a few, uh, few months ago at uh, the YouTube Golf Day, and uh, my mate Lewis decided to, in front of an audience, decided to pass me the three iron of this to hit, which you can imagine uh, the look that I gave him. Uh, but I was quite surprised, and yet, yeah, astonishingly, I hit it, and I hit it all right. Um, and that was what got me intrigued with these things when the seven iron demo club come in here. I really wanted to have another bash with these because, yeah, they are, like I said, you tell me what the, it's so nice as well in terms of ball flight, it's very, very similar, 35 degrees loft, sorry, on the Tiger Woods model, uh, so a degree weaker. Again, really high towering ball flight. Um, they're nice, these are nice. There's no two ways about it. If you can find the middle of these on a consistent basis. And again, I'd like to hit a few kind of, uh, and I sound uh, a bit cocky here, but I'd like to see a few off center hits and see what happens because uh, the balls out the middle are absolutely pure. Um, yeah, impressed. Anyway, I'll carry on into some golf balls. I'll switch over to some, some range balls a bit in a minute. I'm gonna switch over to some uh, SD02s from C, we'll collect some data, and then I'll give you my opinion in terms of uh, head to heads. But for the time being, at this stage, from your perspective, would you go into a shop and try either of those? Are they on your agenda at all? And if you had to pick one of these right now, which one would it be? I think this one is pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. I'm gonna go straight into numbers and uh, I'll put them up on screen for you now. And I'll also show you, rather than individual shots, I'll show you the summary of both and then I'll show you the dispersion of both. Uh, let's start off with the blueprint iron, shall we? Um, so, a club head speed on average of 81 miles an hour, uh, 112 ball speed, 64 spin, 154 carry. Pretty much exactly where you'd want it to be on every number, I would suggest simple as that really let's throw up the same numbers for the tiger woods iron and again one degree weaker in loft 
Right, so 80.6, slightly slower on club head speed average, 112.8, but produced a slightly faster ball speed. 653 spin, which again was almost identical, and 154 in terms of carry. Now, interesting things there, really, for me. That, uh, and, and I'll throw up in front of you now the dispersion chart. Interesting on the numbers, really. Uh, 35 degree loft, and yet the distances were very, very similar in terms of that one degree difference. Um, if anything, um, slightly um, quicker ball speeds out of the weaker lofted iron, which was again slightly strange, and again from the slightly slower swing speed. Maybe we just found a little bit more of the centre um, on the ping uh, on the tailor made iron. I don't know, but it's a, there's a slight contradiction there in perhaps what you would have expected if you read through those numbers, or at least it's what I would have done anyway. Um, but I think there's virtually nothing to split these two irons really. One major thing for me is the difference, and that's the feel. I still, and I mentioned the thing, I don't know how Ping, Ping for me can't produce a high quality forged iron yet. I think the Ping, the forged wedges that they produce were the same, they've still got a hard feel to them. They're not the soft feel and sound that you'd expect from forged, and in the uh, P70Ws they've done exactly that, it is butter soft. For me, the Tiger Woods iron is a classic blade, a classic traditional blade, and if you're looking for that, I don't think you can go too far wrong with them, to be perfectly honest with you. The price on both of these is very, very high. I think you're looking at between 17, 1800 quid for the blueprint, and maybe just a little bit more for the P70W, so we're talking high end in terms of price. Um, but, like I said, they're both very traditional in terms of uh, their profile, better feel for me the winner is the tailor-made product better feel better looking um, and overall just ticks a few more boxes and uh, I was able to hit the three iron, three iron on the odd occasion as well but nothing to split them really I'd uh, more be interested in your opinion and the biggest opinion I think really or the biggest thing I've took from it is the surprise really of uh, I was able to hit them and I was relatively comfortable with them and got some decent performance. I think that's probably the biggest shot. Uh, certainly not like a blade of old in terms of forgiveness. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Comments down below. And uh, let's hope the sunshine comes out in the UK and I can get doing some on-course testing with these very, very soon. Right, see you later.